Good evening, Trent Tobago. Welcome to another edition of Scoreboard here on ACPN. Remember, we are on every Tuesday evening from 8 p.m. and you on available on Tuesday evening. You can check us at 1 p.m. on a Wednesday where we have a repeat. Um, tonight, we are going to be talking cricket. And um, we are, as we all know, the state of West Indies cricket. And all in some of comments coming out from the regional um, tournaments. Um, for instance, the Red Force, not, you know, as prominent as they we once used to be uh the four day tournament from i think the last time we came last was somewhere around 1986 and we were looking good in the 50 overs but again we didn't you know take that extra leap towards getting through to the finals um with me to discuss um the topic of cricket tonight is a former director of the west indies cricket board and a present executive member of the trent Baker cricket board mr Ballet Mahabir. It's a pleasure. Welcome to ACTN. Thanks, George, for having me. Well, can we use the statement and say West Indies cricket or the cricket in the Caribbean is in crisis? Crisis may be a strong word, but we are in trouble. We are in some trouble. Our results um, in the recent time has been very troubling and has been the cause of much concern. But Today, we played a practice game against Afghanistan. And um, I, I, when I checked the scores this morning, it, we were well on our way to victory. So let's hope that we, it was a practice game in the qualifying tournament. So let's hope that we, we, we won that one. Well, normally, we always seem to do good in practice games, you know, looking good going into tournaments. But when the tournament reached, we always, there's always a stumbling block. But before we get into West Indies cricket, let's quickly turn our attention to uh, the local domestic cricket and our Red Force team. As I mentioned before, I think the last time we came last in the four-day fixture was somewhere around 1986. Yeah, that, that, I don't have the right year, but it's somewhere, somewhere in that era, yeah. about 30 years ago. Right. Um, in the four-day tournament, we struggled. In the 50 over, I think we lost the first game and we came back nicely. We were looking like, you know, we were on track to, to, to win the tournament. To me, I, I thought our stumbling block came when we lost um, Lewis and uh, Mohammed. Mohammed. Yeah. The other teams lost players too, but I think that hurt us. Let's talk a bit firstly on the... For the, for the tournament, because a lot of people are saying that, okay, we don't have the Bravos, the Pollers, the Ram, um, not the Ramblin so much, but the, the, the Channel Gabriel and our top cricketers. But other teams in the same situation with us, they have players well, abroad. Um, I don't have the data 100% right, but mm -hmm. since 1966 to now, mm -hmm. regardless of who played, mm -hmm. who were the administrators, who were the captain, we have only won the regional four day five times. So that's less than 10% win percentage. What do you think the reason for that is? Um, it will need a little more study. In the recent past, it has been our attraction to white ball cricket. And our success at white ball cricket has overshadowed our success mm -hmm. or our performances at the shorter forms of the game. Mm -hmm. Numerous administration, numerous times in the, from 1966 to now, the Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board would have tried different things. 66 to 80 would have been the old Trinidad Cricket Council. Mm -hmm. 80 to, at some time would have been the Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board of Control. And then it would have been the Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board. But same result, mm -hmm. regardless of what has happened. Um, there seems to be a lack of affinity for the game mm -hmm. in that particular format. And when the white ball era came, um, for, I think we have won the regional 50 over 12 times which is a, a very high percentage, yeah. and we have gone, gone, we've run away with the T20 version. Mm -hmm. in, in the last 11 years, I think we have won six or seven of those titles, starting back from the Stanford era. Yeah. So in the recent past, there's definitely an affinity for our players with the white ball and the shorter forms of the game. Um, but we, have, we do not have a good history. But how do we correct that? It will be very difficult to correct it in the longer version. The world is tending towards shorter forms of the game. 
our hero, since Brian Lara has exited the scene, we do not have a red ball hero. Our heroes are Pollard and Bravo and Narine and Evan Lewis, and they've all gravitated, and they all have made their names as, as limited overs cricketers. Our young cricketers, I mean, I know you have been around looking at cricket at all levels, our young cricketers tend to gravitate towards that, and it may be the fact that it is a far more financially rewarding format of the game. Um, it may be more attractive, more exciting. I don't know, I, I can't say that we can punch one button and say this is the answer, but it seems to me that the younger people have a definite tendency to want to play the shorter versions of the game. And we will always be challenged to win the regional 40. Now, if you look at over the years, we would also have been um, weakened by losing a lot of our top players who don't really participate in the, yeah, in the re regional that. 40. Um, Dwayne Bravo would not have played a regional 40 game for many years. Pollard would have played very intermittently. And if he played 15 games for Trinidad, I think that would have been a lot. Sunil, similarly. Yeah. Um, so we don't normally have our best team on the field. And it gives us an opportunity. We have to look at it as a building exercise. That's how I would look at it. And put our cricketers into there and, 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 and um, invert the cricket development. In other words, use the 40 as a development tool to make the cricketer a better cricketer. Understand the game. Put my younger players in the, in the 40 and let the older guys go on and play the, the shorter versions of the game. So we have to come up with a strategic solution to it. But I don't think it's going to transform into winning the... Uh, for they with any consistency. Is it something with the Caribbean? Because if we can just jump quickly to test cricket, when there is a test match in the Caribbean, it's the same thing. You hardly see that support. But when you look at the Australian versus India and the South Africa, for test cricket, it's a five day cricket, which some people say test cricket is dying. But you see these stadiums at the capacity. And the same support, well, not really the same support, but a great support for the test is being, um, is being seen. Well, I suppose it's sheer numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, in a city in, say, Melbourne or Perth mm -hmm. or in England, one city would have more people yeah, yeah. Than, than Trinidad or Barbados or Ghana or any one of the countries in where we would play a test match. Mm -hmm. So firstly, that is one um, thing that will help the crowds to be greater. Mm -hmm. I suppose. Um, in in India, where crowds are dwindling as well for one day, the same thing would operate. For, sorry, for Test cricket, the, the same thing will 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 hold. But generally, if you saw an article by Peterson, and I'm saying Peterson is an accredited expert, Kevin Peterson, he too acknowledged the fact that Test cricket is seriously challenging in all but five domains. Mm -hmm. And um, we, if we have to keep all three formats alive, it's simple. You have six million people. You have three formats of the game. Format A is the shortest with the most money. Format B is the second one with the second most money. And the third one, that is the longest one, carries the least, the least financial reward mm -hmm. and the least attraction to the spectator. Um, I really think it's going to be a challenge for Test Cricket to survive in the Caribbean and worldwide. So when you look at the present crop of West of Trinidad Tobago players, most of the time we do not feel the strong team because, as you said earlier, Narayan, Pollard, the two Bravos, Simmons, uh, Simmons Lewis, even Ram Paul, Ram Paul uh, even this new guy now, we see he's getting Lewis. another um, um, fast bowler, Gabriel. Gabriel, Gabriel. Yeah. So when you look at that, we, the top players for Trinidad Tobago is not always available. What do we do to get the younger guys to step up? Because why I'm using this reference is because I saw with, um, I think with Barbados and also with Rhode Islands, they, in the 50 overs, some of the top players left the team. But some of the young players who, um, the name, I didn't hear the name before, mm -hmm. I mean, they stepped up and I mean, they produced. How are we going to get our local guys here to really step up? Because we have the Sozanos and those other guys, but, you know, sometimes... They do always the consistency. Yeah, the consistency. And I think that is what is hurting us. I think we expect too much from people under 25, 24, 25. Um, if you look at the world game, the, the top players begin to start 
flexing their muscles, so to speak, and producing at about 24, 25. When Virat Kohli came down here as a youngster, West Indies bounced him out. Yes. Um, he, he failed in the, the series. Joe Root didn't start lighting the world of fire. So too Kane Williams. No, we have to be a little bit patient mm -hmm. and give the guys the opportunities to, to develop themselves. As I say, we have to look at the four-day cricket as a development um, format of the game. We also, I feel, I don't want to say profile, but we also have to streamline cricketers into particular formats. If you look at Australia and you look at the T20 team, you will hardly recognize a name that plays in the, in the other format. Yes. Except for Davey Warner and the skipper. Mm -hmm. right? It's completely new. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, in the Caribbean, you don't have that depth mm -hmm. because you don't have the number of people playing cricket. So if you have depth, then you can pick three completely separate teams for the yeah, three. Focus separately on each. Yes. Um... I perhaps would like to see two kind of management systems for West Indies cricket and probably even Trinidad cricket. A white ball coach and a red ball coach. And, the, and then you, you give them specifics to deal with. And we have to accept that we are not going to become world beaters in the four-day format as easily as, say, a Guyana, who, who doesn't suffer as much um, loss of their cricketers to international duty and to, uh, to, to the other franchises as Trinidad and Tobago would. And therein lies a tale, because the Guyanese cricketers would stay play for Guyana. They wouldn't get a, a IPL or a Pakistan Super League or wherever, Big Bash. Mm. And they play all their cricket for Guyana. So Guyana will do well at the four-day tournament. The pitches in Guyana help them to win games as well. Yeah. So while our cricketers are, are excellent across the world, so what is success? Is success winning the four-day tournament alone or producing good quality cricketers for the world? So I think we have to change uh, and don't think that the first-past-the-post system is the only measure of success for our nation's cricket. You know, we, we are producing cricketers who have brought name and fame and glory to Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, we don't win the tournaments, but what do we do? As a member of the Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board, what measures are put in place now to correct or address this same situation that you are talking about, uh, developing the, the, the for the um, cricketers, you know, to reach a point where we could be competitive, maybe not win um, in the short term, but in the long term? Um, do we have a good, fairly good system. It is struggling now for a lack of resources. We had grassroots programs across the country to which we will play re um, interzone under 15, under 17, under 19. And then we had an academy. Sadly, the academy was not done in 2017. We're hoping to do it back again in 2018, mm -hmm. where we bring in our cricketers and harden them up a little bit. And then put them, before we put them into the regional team. Uh, at the regional level, I think uh, this year we had a lot of youngsters who played, and, and it was good to have Dinesh Ramdin shepherding them through that um, process. And if you can have one or two senior players like Imran Khan, Riyad Emrit, and these guys remain with them a little bit, I suppose the transfer of knowledge could take place at that level because the best learning, play, learning is, that, is, is on the field. field. Yeah. Yeah. So from that point of view, uh, I can see some successes in the future. But I don't expect us to be dominant in, in regional 4 day. We also have to do some specialist coaching, which B-Mobile has been helping us with, and Brian Lara has been a part of it. Um, so those are things. You see, like Guyana would have benefited immensely from the presence of Shiv Narayan Chandapal yes. as a mentor to the mm -hmm. team, more than a player. Um, perhaps we need Dinesh Ramdin in the years to come will perhaps fill that role for us in Trinidad and Tobago, and we would, we would have that kind of eye, that kind of control, that kind of input from a senior player who will influence the team in a positive way. But right now, George, the, the accent by the young cricketers, they, they like this, the, the shorter version. Yeah, yeah. well, it's, it's, it's financially beneficial to them. Mm. And hence the reason why a number of the players from the, the West Indies always, you know, um, go to the IPL and the Big Bash and not play in, in, in certain tournaments or represent West Indies at, at, um, at test level. But um, when you look at what is happening outside with T20 cricket, do you think that T20 cricket helps a cricketer you were saying that it will be nice to have separate um, administration for both teams. and yeah. separate teams. But in the West Indies, the pool is small. Yeah. So you will find that a T20 will have to play the yeah. 50 overs and, wrong with and, that. and yeah. test. But do you think 
especially the, you have time with the 50 overs because 50 overs. But do you think the T20 helps a batsman to properly develop so when he gets on the 40 or you have a test team, he can adapt properly? No, it doesn't help him. It hurts him. So the, 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 the pathway has to be in the other direction. You play the four-day first and you learn the basics of the game, how to defend your wicket, when, which balls to play at, which balls not to play at, how to run between the wickets. Um, you, as a bowler, what are the good areas to bowl in, you know, um, look, probing for weaknesses in a batsman, learning the game. Not only in a four-over game, it's a, it's a very rushed circumstance. If you play over a day and you spend 90 overs in the field, you will learn all kinds of different things. So I think the learning has to be done in the four-day. And then you will become a, a, an exceptional um, short version cricketer. I don't think. I think if you become an exceptional short term cricketer, it takes a special talent. And I know David Warner went that part where he started in Australia, mm -hmm. playing T20 first before he went on to the to the Test team. Mm -hmm. So there are one or two other instances like that. But most of the instances, the guys come through the Test arena. And and you know the Virat Kohlis and Stephen Smith and Williamsons. That is not going to happen all the time, where fellas yeah, could yeah, play all yeah, three yeah, formats, yeah. Mahila, Jaya Ward, and Sangaka. And, 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 and be, be on top of the game. And be on yeah. top of the game. Those, those are exceptional talents. So I think our quest in the West Indies should be to be competitive at all three levels. Um, the world of cricket has changed and changed rapidly. Um, the people have surpassed us in what they're doing for the development, the other test playing nations. And we will always be playing catch up. And I dare say that as well in T20 now. Um, we, we need to take a break, but uh, when we come back, I, I want to find out. You mentioned in a newspaper report that the that Jumidin, the selector, should resign. No, no, I didn't say that, but I will clarify clear, clear yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, you that. Whereas you are viewing scoreboard here on ACT, and we are talking cricket with Malin Mahabir. We'll be right back after this short break. changing your question. What I would say, Steve, I, is this. But, but my first question was, and roll back that tape. I made my debut for Crystal Palace against Tottenham Hotspur. My responsibility was to get the ball and make things happen offensively. Only by not tell me now. In all the time we've played together, I've always been the decoy. Welcome to Field of Dreams on ACTN. My name is Steve David, and I'm your host. Welcome to another edition of Scoreboard here on ACT, and it's always a pleasure to be in your company every Tuesday evening between the hours of 8 and 9. Welcome to the new season of Football 101. I am your host, Joshua Dematos. Well, it's time for your weekly football news update. Hello, me, Messi. Unfortunately, uh, Max. Kiss, kiss the badge, kiss no. the badge. Oh, uh -huh. What's that? Welcome to this edition of the interview. And as you can see, I'm not alone on the set. I have Marcus, a Liverpool fan, and I have Shaquille. Welcome back, viewers. Welcome back to Scoreboard here on ACTN. Mr. Mahaber, you need to correct that statement. Yeah. A uh, radio show mm -hmm. with Andre Batiste. And he asked me if I think the chairman of selectors should resign. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I can't say what the chairman of selectors should do. Mm -hmm. It is how he internalizes the information and how he, he assesses his position, and then he will make that decision. Yeah. And then he asked me if I was in that position, if I would have resigned, and mm -hmm. I said yes. Okay. So that is what it was. Okay. Yeah. That is what I said I would have resigned, but what, how I internalize information on how I would have make, arrive at a decision is not necessarily the same way the chairman of selectors would right, do. Right. So I just think the headline was misleading. Yeah. But I also said on that program that in sports management, you live and die by the results of the team. Yes. So, you know, you have to take all that into consideration. Well, I'm, I'm glad you clarified that, you know. Um, now, West Indies, for the first time in the history, we have to play qualifying matches to get in to the ICC World Cup. We rule cricket. 
we want the women's version, the under 19, and the men's version. Sadly, we have reached the point now where we have to play against Afghanistan, I think it's Kenya, and not Kenya, um, Zimbabwe, and uh, I think it's some other um, nation. Yeah. And uh, Hong Kong or Papua New Guinea, right. or whoever it is, we, not, we don't belong there. Ex we don't belong <laughs> there. No, we played Pakistan in a series in the West Indies, and they gave us trouble. Yeah. So, presently, how we are operating, we cannot say for sure that we're going to beat all these teams because on the day of our match, anything can happen. Yeah. As a, I'm removing all the titles from you, but as I'm asking you, as a supporter of cricket, how that does, how does that make you feel? I am very depressed in the way West Indies cricket is heading in the direction in which it's headed. If you look at our slide, it didn't start today. You know, it started in 95, and we have not been able to do anything about it. Again, I'm not blaming any particular administration. But, <clears throat> but we lost our footing in test cricket, and we have never managed to regain it. We keep slipping down and down and down. Subsequently, we lost our footing in ODI cricket. And same way we have been going down. And I dare say all signs are there that we are going to begin the slide in T20 cricket as well. But we've seen it, have you seen it? Yeah, the pass score in a T20 game now is 200, right? Teams chasing down that at ease. I don't, I don't know if we're there yet. Look at the ODI, look at the, the regional 50 over that we finished. That was completed recently. One score of over 300. And I think it was seven scores of between, if I look down and say the pitches were not at the best, between 275 and 300, there were seven scores, I think. But you look at that 50-over game internationally, and 300 is the norm. Yeah, and teams chase another. Easily, yeah. easily. Um, so it means that we are nowhere near where we should be as a cricketing nation. The talent might be there, as Ian Bishop and people like that keep saying. But the most profound statement and third talent made for the last 20 years was when Brian Lara said, we take good talent and make it bad or something to that effect. Yeah. And I concur with him a lot. I mean, names like Adrian Barth come to mind, right? Names like Nicolas Puran in Trinidad comes to mind. For us who... You know, I'm kind of disappointed in um, Adrian Barth the way... Well, I don't really you know, don't know all the facts, but I thought that um, when Lara took him under his wings, um, I thought that this guy would have been... I mean, not another Lara, because Lara is one in a million. Yeah. But I thought that, you know, and he just fade up. Of, 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 of the radar. Yeah, well, Adrian was at my club for, I've known Adrian, he's very well from the age of 14, and he, we had a little management team around him, not many people would know this. Mm -hmm. um, the late Aloy Lee Kwai, myself, his dad, mm -hmm. and Roland Sampat, and we used to meet every quarter mm -hmm. from the age of 14 and set quarterly goals every three for months for him, yeah. with him, with okay. him, he okay. was there too. Yeah. We'd have a dinner, mm -hmm. and we would sit down and say, okay, Adrian, this is what we need to do in the next three months. Mm -hmm. And his father was really the implementer. Roland and I were at Clark Road at the time. Um, he was at Clark Road as well. And we, we, we hit every, mm -hmm. every mile post, mm -hmm. getting him to 100 at first class level into the test side, into the ODI side. Um, made a, made, has an ODI 100, I remember. Um, his 100 against Australia. The week before, Joey Karu and I um, were in a little social gathering, and Joey was telling me, he said, Bal, Adrian is going to cross 30 runs in any innings in, um, in Australia. So the night, it was a, a night game, and about 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning is when Adrian got down, and my phone rang. Um, and, and with Joey, he said, um, I know you're not sleeping, so I ain't waking you up. Mm -hmm. You know, um, congratulations. I, I didn't think the boy had it in him. And for me, it's a major disappointment because the plan was for Adrian to continue playing in the days of when Sarwan, Shiv, and Gail were still on the team so that the pressure would not have come. He hit all those markers. And now, today, at 26, I think he would be now. He should have been the premier batsman in the yes. Caribbean. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, Adrian fell out of love with the game and doesn't even play anymore at any level, at any, any level at all. Sure. Yeah. Um, and we have other talented cricketers in the Caribbean who I've seen. I mean, look at Ravi Rampal, discarded before his time as well. Yes. He was picked before his time, mind you, as a 19-year-old when he broke down. Mm -hmm. And then he was discarded long before he was ready to be discarded. And, you know, we have taken some good talent over the years and we have messed it up. Look at Joe Fra, Archer, you. 
That's that's yes. Yeah. And right. before Archer, Jordan, the mm -hmm. other Jordan, Chris yes, Jordan. Who plays for England right now? Right. He was supposed to be playing for West Indies. He's a he's a Barbadian by, by birth and mm -hmm. he played for Barbados in the regional four days yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so um I don't think we're managing our 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 resources well. Um, I remember, uh, without calling his name, uh, the same Barrett, um, a top executive in Trinidad and Tobago in the private sector, said, Balan, what is the problem with Adrian? I said, well, he has short muscles, taut muscles, so he keeps breaking down from time to time. He said, look, if this, I run one of the biggest companies in Trinidad, and if that was one of my employees who would produce for me the way Barrett would produce for West Indies cricket, I would send him to get the best help in the world. Yes. We didn't do that, right? Uh, so I don't think we have a good history of managing the resources that we have. It may be the fact that we don't have the resources to, to manage the resources, which is a catch-22 situation. But I think we need to pay a lot more emphasis on development of cricket and development of human capital. Mm -hmm. Right? If we develop human capital, where are our greats today? Generally, they snipe at West Indies cricket, right? Um, some of them have... Um, gone so far back that I don't even think, don't even know if they will go to a game. You know, you still have Kurt Lee commentating, um, Courtney Walsh is in Bangladesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very few, very few. Um, yeah. I think it's this. Well, you don't hear Holen in the Caribbean at all. No. Right? So it's basically Holen, um, Bishop, Amrose, Ganga. Well, I see Tino Best is on the scene now. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, Jimmy Adams. Right? Well, I mean, they are involved, but at all, the super greats, the Vivian Richards, yes, Gordon yeah, Greenwich, yeah, the Desmond, yeah. they may a little bit dated here. Yeah. What, are, what, are, what are they doing mm -hmm. now, you know? Um, even if it's to come and transfer the knowledge, even to the, we used to have Gordon in Trinidad, you know that, yes, Greenwich, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But, we, 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 you know, he's, he's no longer here. He was employed at UTT at one time. Um, so we have, we have, let's say we have lost that resource, but still we need to find a way, a find a mechanism to perhaps bring back the academy. Some, some um, cricketing think tank has to sit down and craft uh, a pathway and have give it a five-year goal. So regardless of which administration, administrator or administration comes in or leaves, that we have this thing that we want to give it five years, seven years for it to work. Um, that will re pro probably revive test cricket in the Caribbean because the white ball cricket is a much more spontaneous game. Right? While you still have to learn, and you see at a Virat Kohli again to use him, it will run between the wickets at at the 50 or over in the same way he will run at the 10. We don't do that. So uh, if we want to play cricket, then because Brazil don't play the same football that, that England plays or that, that Russia plays, and, and they still are very competitive against. So take the talents that you have. If we have stronger men to hit the ball further, but if we could do that and still also run some of the singles and, and place the ball differently. And yeah, because so. uh, uh, sing, running singles is, is, is our problem, eh? because we a lot of dot balls that we soak up in, in, in matches, and mm. that it, it, it hurt us. But um, do you, okay, for instance, the, the present team that is out there to qualify, right? Look how many of our top cricketers is missing. Russell, Gale. No, two. Gale is there. Oh, yeah, Gale and Evan Lewis. Yeah. Right, but you have Russell. Both Bravos. Both Bravos. Pollard. Pollard. Narayan. Narayan. Um, Simmons, I think. It is. Yeah, so, yeah, Simmons. Yeah, right? Ram Paul. Ram Paul. Um, some would say, if we play our strongest team, we're not supposed to be in this position. I agree. Um, we're not supposed to be. But, you know, we, we have not really been winning with the strongest team as well. Okay. But what... Is it that the strongest team is not getting sufficient time? I don't think there's a buy-in, George, to mm. West Indies cricket in the way people felt patriotic to the, um, to the Maroon Army in the way it was in the in, past. In the, okay. um, there's a, a, a divided loyalty now between where, where I am most uh, um, employed to the economically best position for me. So you may find a cricketer has a loyalty to a brand mm -hmm. rather than to the region. You know, so we need to we need to pull these things together. Understand that, given the Caribbean, we can't pay retainers that the Englands and Australias yeah. and uh, Indias will pay. But let us let us balance, allowing you to go and play in more lucrative tournaments and playing for the Caribbean. Um, how we go about that? I suppose Weeper, the West Indies Cricket Board, and some of the senior players, and perhaps the business world, should get together to craft a model that could work. Because if you look at recently, the president was almost bashing three of the guys for going not for not accepting the 
invitation to play in the qualifiers. And using the statement to top it off that they might not. And, but then he retracted on that recently and said that um, all the, the guys were already contracted to Pakistan mm -hmm. and perhaps in the future we have to do things a bit differently. So I think it, he was, he, you know, his mouth opened a little bit too early on that one. Because the, the guys were contracted, from my information, three months before this tournament to the Pakistan Super League. Okay. So I already have a contract. Yeah. They, they, if I have to come to play for you now, I'm out of contract here. So let's, let's talk, right? Um, so I don't think it, you know, West Indies Cricket Board management, I'm on record as saying this, never mind the board of directors. The management is horrible. But I was supposed to ask you that if you are satisfied with, um, with the Cameron and the present West Indies board, um, you'll respond to that. We need to take a break. So when we come back, you'll respond to that. Yes, we are. You are watching Scoreboard here on ACTN, and we'll take a short break. We'll be right back. You're watching ACTN, The Voice. Connect with ACTN The Voice on Facebook or Instagram at ACTN The Voice. You're watching ACTN The Voice. Welcome back, viewers. Welcome back to Forward on ACTN. Before the break, Mr. Um, Mabe, you were saying? Is... We are talking about um, the present team, right? Not having the, 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 the top players, right, at any given moment. Yeah, we need, to, we need to get that think tank going on, how we could utilize our best players, give them windows. But IPL is already a window. Mm -hmm. uh, let me, a simple solution like the regional 50 over that concluded recently. I know Suraj Raghunath went to the last chief exec meeting weekend going here, and I'll ask him to raise it. Why do we have to? Not, why do we have to name 14 people and only keep to those 14 people? If the West Indies Cricket Board, are, they are going to pay 14 passage, uh, passage for 14 people, 14 hotel rooms, for fine, I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. But it's, we should be, give them, be able to give them a list of 20, 22, so that if small, young Bravo wants to play four games on leave, that mm -hmm. should be the TTCB's right. Yeah, to replace them. Yeah, at our course. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? And in that way, you will bridge the gap of Bravo having not, not qualified to play for West Indies. Mm -hmm. And if Pollard wants to play two games, that's fine. Mm -hmm. it, once it doesn't cost the West Indies cricket board any more money than it's costing them, because you can't have people flitting in and out of a team as you see fit. To me, that is a domestic tournament, and we should look at ways of making it easy for people to qualify rather than putting barriers in place mm -hmm. for people not to qualify. So that's one simple way of making sure that some of our players will qualify to play for the West Indies and still have some affinity for West Indies cricket. As it is now, it's almost like we're standing at the door with a big stick and, and telling you, come in, come, you know. Yeah. Um, it's not like we have to create an enabling environment. We are challenged by depth because of the, of the small quantity of people that live within the Caribbean. And we can't afford to lose our top talent. We, we're hemorrhaging. And that is not going to help cricket in the Caribbean. So you are former director of the West Indies Cricket Board, you, re, you resigned. Um, that's after you went up to, to, um, for the election. Yes, yes. Which um, in a statement uh, somewhere I read that um, it was not done the proper way, it was voted by hands. Yes. By show of hands, which is not the proper way. You want to comment on that? Well, I myself was not in the room for the elections because the two delegates, but yes, they did vote in that election by show of hands. And I felt it was wrong because once one delegate says that I don't want show of hands, you should go with secret ballot. They, they, that didn't obtain at the meeting, and they went ahead with a show of hands vote. And 
the result was what it is. I don't know if the results would have changed, yeah. mind you. But it's not nice to run a democracy. That's not a democratic way. You have 12 people voting mm -hmm. and you don't trust the 12 people to write a ballot. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say much about the organization. But I just walked away from it. Um, I think that was in March. And I, I had decided when I was going to leave West Indies Cricket long before I left. Um, and it wasn't because I had, you know, I had made a statement at the time that it's time to step back from it. Because when you get too immersed in, in something like this, you don't see the, the errors of your ways, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you, you tend to think that all is kosher. You have this group thing that starts to set in among the board of directors. But I was telling you before the break that the management of West Indies cricket needs to be looked at. I think there are something like 50 people working with Cricket West Indies in Antigua. And ever so often, there are so many people who are stepping down and resigning. I mean, to me, every other week, you hear somebody, you know, resign. It is a convoluted system, and I don't think it's an efficient system. And I think we need to fix the back room of West Indies cricket. I think we need to put a... I mean, the, the India thing brought it clearly out to focus, and I had real problems with that when it happened. The team left the West Indies to go to play a tournament without a contract. In these days of electronic communication, that should yes. never happen. A contract could have been emailed to them. Also. Right. Yeah. yeah. And when, well, then they would have had a contract. They would have had to stay and play, play out the period. And then no staff member was ever brought to heel for that. But at the same time, we were looking to, to while I didn't agree with the players one bit, but we were looking to, to punish the players for what they did on the tour. I have no problem if the if the thing is treated equitably across yeah. the board. And somebody, the CEO or the legal officer or somebody should have had to walk as well. Mm -hmm. It didn't happen. And West Indies con cricket continues to flounder, right? Um, so we, what we see coming out in the newspaper is what is the top end of it. But to me, the engine room of West Indies cricket, where it all happens in the back room, it's not a very efficient organization. And we mentioned something about the R. The IRS? IRC. IRC, yes. Yeah. Tell, tell us a bit about that. The IRC was set up in Trinidad to try and look at our constitution or all our governance issues and give us recommendations for transforming Trinidad and Tobago's cricket. The IRC has submitted a report. Um, it is in front of the, it is with the board now, and I expect that that will make some kind of transformation in, in Trinidad and Tobago's cricket. You know, I have to be careful what I say because there's also a court matter. Okay. So I don't oh, know yes. if one, one yes. will impact on the other in that regard. But just to touch on West Indies cricket, there was an interesting suggestion by a present director of the West Indies cricket board two weeks ago. He called me to say, you know, if we just make one simple change in West Indies cricket, could change the cricket. So I said, how is that? He said, instead of each country just have two votes towards the presidency of the West Indies cricket board, why doesn't each shareholder, which is the six regional, right, Trinidad, Guyana, Barbados, Jamaica, Winwards, and have 10 votes each? So now it becomes 60 votes for the president. So it's not easy to manipulate. And I mean, is I, I find that a very interesting and simple solution. Can that happen? Yes, it could happen. All the, 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 the West Indies, cricket West Indies have to do is accept the change. And then you have 60 people voting. So it's, up, it's up to President Cameron to accept that. But I think the board. The board. The board. The board. The board will have to change the constitution. Because I if I'm the president, I know that would not hinder me from, 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 from winning. I, I will accept. Well, you know that stuns progress in any field. That if you figure, if it, if it, if, it, if what your guy, if CWI or TTCB have morphed from what it was, a cricket administration into a political party, you're in trouble. Eh? <laughs> you know, I mean, I have sat, yeah. I have been around Trinidad cricket for a long time, mm -hmm. and. Um, we are on the cusp of it being very, very political. You know, we, there's a very divisive, um, a, a, a strong divide in Trinidad cricket in the administration as well. And it's not helping Trinidad cricket neither. So you that's, know? that's part of the, the, the problem. Yes, so the IRC was commissioned to see how we can find ways of, of making it work, a workable solution. And I hope that um, the recommendations of the IRC, when it is made public, um, we would all have a close look at it, withdraw from that, you know, I said too much involvement and in it okay. look at Trinidad cricket for the next 40 years and see if we, we have a plan here that could take us halfway there, even 20 of the next 40 years, because things become less relevant in modern society far, in a far shorter time than it used to in the past. So the Lee Kwai administration, they took over from Queen's Park in 1980. They have taken us now to 2018, um, which is 38 years. Um, that has worked well, but it's fraying at the edges and it needs to be strengthened and toughened up and um, uh, change needs to come. And let us hope that what the, these three eminent people in the IRC, that they will 
be the catalyst for change that what whatever positive change and that it could read down to the field because there's always a connect between the boardroom and the dressing room, you know. Always. Always. Now we have when we won the the the, the, the fifty overs, the last West Indies um, victory that we had there. T twenty. The, uh, no, the, the fifty overs. Uh -huh. Right, okay. the ICC fifty overs. We had the Sami as the captain. Right? Was a 50 over that Sammy, one of the captain? No, T20. The T20, the T20, T20 sorry, yeah. the T20. Um, yes, let me make my correction. And we saw the removal of Sammy, and then we saw Ola as the test captain, and then we see Braffitt as the T20 um, captain. Do you think that these guys will push into a role? way too early with proper lack of experience as a leader, as a captain? It, those things depend on the individual. Um, Graham Smith became the captain of South Africa at a very early age and he, was, he became very successful. Steve Smith as well, to a certain extent Virat Kohli as well. Um, the, the thing is here, I made a comment years ago when Ramden was given the captaincy of the West Indies team and I said it was a crown of thorns. Now, I was, I was pulled up a little bit at West Indies Cricket Board level at the time for the statement, but um, the, the fact is that the statement is true. The, the captain is going to be as good as the support system he had around him. Sami, that is an interesting name. Darren Sami had the support of Otis Gibson. Otis Gibson had the support of Ernest Hilaire, who was the CEO. And Ernest Hilaire had the support of the board, which was headed by Dr. Julian Hunt. So that alignment was there all the way through. Yeah. If the captain feels that he is not, he does not enjoy the support of either the people below him or the people on top of him, it could be a very lonely place. Um, you need to have that alignment. And I haven't seen it any time since. So I'm not going on personalities here, but I haven't seen the alignment and the plan coming through from the West Indies Cricket Board all the way to the captain, to the teams on the field. I think there's too much um, fr uh, friction between those elements, you know. Um, Richard Pybus was there, did a good 19-point plan, um, but he didn't enjoy the greatest relationship with the players. Now, at the end of the day, if you are in sport administration, you have to understand that you're working for the players. Whether you like it or not, that is the end product. So if you're in football or cricket or hockey or badminton or anything, the people who you put on the field as your national team or your regional team, you're working for them. Yes. Um, and if you can't accept that, that you have to do all that is within reasonable, reasonable power to get them to be the best that they can be, then you're in the wrong business, right? And a lot of it is volunteerism. So if your passion not there and you're committed to working hard towards making the West Indies team or the Trinidad football team or whoever the best that it is, leave the thing. We have to take our final break. When we get back, I want to touch a bit about the domestic cricket because I know that it's now down to a two-day yeah. um, event and... Um, a lot of restructuring with funding and things have happened. So we'll, we'll talk about that. Viewers, we take our final break. We'll be right back. When you do not start your process with God at the center, it will always end in disappointment. There is no significance to any process that God is not the center of. I don't believe anything more than I believe that. To, to neglect your priorities is to forfeit your provision. There's never a lack of provision in God. Never. Everything that you need is already here. There is never a lack of provision. So the problem of the people in the way they experienced it was a problem with provision. Haggai said, it's not provision. Consider your ways. What you think is a lack of provision is a lack of priority. Good evening, Trenda Bego. Welcome to another edition of Scoreboard here on ACT. And it's always a pleasure to be in your company every Tuesday evening between the hours of 8 and 9. You're watching ACTN, The Voice.
Connect with ACTN The Voice on Facebook or Instagram at ACTN The Voice. You're watching ACTN The Voice. Welcome back, viewers. Welcome back to Scoreboard here on ACTN. Um, Mr. Mabe, a lot of changes have been made in the domestic season for 2018. You want to share with us? Yes, those are enforced changes. The fact is that the board does not have the money. So we paid, it cost us the National League, which is which the 40 top clubs in the country, would have been $3.4 million a year. Prize monies, club grants, umpiring, and that. that. We simply don't have the money to do it. So we are working with a budget of about 50% of that. Um, unfortunately, and I am involved in a club at First Citizens, Clark Road, it pains. it's very painful to have a cricket season which is only 14 days on a T20 competition. Um, whereas we played several, last year we played seven three-day games, which is 21, and then seven 50-over games, 28, and the T20. So we have halved our season. Um, but the fact of the matter that we don't have the money to, to sustain it, we have had problems in accessing money from sport company. We have um, lost one or two sponsors given the economic um, downturn in the country. And we, 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 are, we are really struggling. Um, interestingly, on the way here, George, I had a call from a potential sponsor, so I hope that could work out. Um, there's a lot of interest in cricket still, but let me tell you, when we played today, one of the things that people may not realize is that years ago, we played our league as a two-day league. And I, I, I hold, I, I am putting it forward that we became the best white ball team in the Caribbean because we played two-day league cricket. So in effect, the clubs took it as 250 over games. Okay. And we played a lot more aggressively. We bowled a lot more aggressively. We batted a lot yeah, more because aggressively. Because you have two days to bat, make a score, and bowl out the next Right. Game. So we became very good. And when, when the T20 came on board, we were, in, in, in a way, prepared for it. And so we, we learned how to transition from the longer version to the shorter version. So that helped us. Um, I don't know how much legs, as we, we said at the start of the program, that, that red ball cricket still has in it, how much life it still has on it. And there's, unless we could make some kind of transformation. One of a suggestion that has come about recently for that is that make the payments for a test match um, as good as what they get paid for a T T20 game. So that broadcast rights and you in the TV business, those are the things that will help uh, yeah, revenue yeah, to yeah. come in. So Trinidad Cricket is at a, a crossroads. What we have done in a positive way is to reintroduce the Interzone 50 over tournament, uh, which I think could be a very exciting tournament. You'll have eight top teams playing in that, all our top cricketers playing in that. And from there, the selectors would look at those games and then select people for to be given contract for the Red Force. So. Um, that brings us back to the first point. If we are putting so much emphasis on white ball cricket, don't expect too, too much great results in our um, red ball next year. Yes. You know? So I suppose we will identify the talent, and uh, as I was saying, then you streamline them into a red ball manager and a white ball manager, and then that might be some way for us to be, a little bit of a specialization would be able to help us to be competitive in both uh, um, formats of the game. But all in all, you all are looking for an exciting 2018 season. Uh, you, have we, the, you have the top club here as usual. Oh, yeah. And the, 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 the Premier One competition is very strong. Yeah. Um, you see Queen's Park, who are the defending champions, struggled a bit this weekend to yeah. get past 200. See they are feeling two teams. Yeah, they have two teams in the Premier One. Okay. And that just goes to the level of organization at Queen's Park and the yeah. level of resources they have. Um, it's not an ideal situation as far as I see it. And let me clarify that by saying I am a member of Queen's Park as well. But... Um, I think it's, it's better if we would have had eight, eight different clubs playing in it. But the, the, the results this week, it was uh, uh, rain, rain played havoc with the cricket. But it, the, the start shows that we'll have some very competitive cricket um, in Trinidad and Tobago in this season. Right. Well, the remaining time we have, we can talk about the upcoming um, series with West Indies trying to qualify for um, the ICC tournament. Once we qualify, do you think that the present team, couple of players that we have right now playing here, who they selected, do you think that that is an ideal team to go into that tournament, or do you see the board force being forced to sit and talk to the Bravos, the Narines, the Pollard, and the, 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 the top players, so we can feel a strong team? Because then we go in India against India, South Africa, New Zealand. You, we saw what happened recently with, with the series in, in, in New Zealand. 
that we were beaten again because some of the players wasn't there. Coming out of this qualifier here, what do you see the board having to do to make sure that we have the team going to the, 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 the tournament with the strongest possible team? All right, let me start by the first part. If this team qualifies, and I hope they do, to go to the World Cup, and I was a betting man, they have a one in 10 chance of qualifying. If you add all the, 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 the globe-trotting cricketers that we have, mm -hmm. it might go up to two and a half out of 10. The world has left us behind in these cricket formats of the game. People chase down 400 but I mean, runs. I mean, okay, people left us behind. Okay, let's say test cricket is, is long on the scene, 50 over, but T20s... But there's a 50 over World Cup. Yeah, but what I'm, what I'm, what I'm we saying We're ninth is, in the world in 50 over. Yeah, but what I'm saying is 50 overs and T20 is not as old as... No, but you know, we, we, we still, rule, we, we rule. Yeah, but we still left behind. When is the last time the Champions League in 19 something, Courtney Brown was still playing when we won our Champions League in, in England, you know, that's the last time we won our 50 over tournament. You look at the scores, as I was telling you, at the start of 50 over tournaments worldwide and see how much runs these teams make and how they run between the wickets and how they work out their opponents and what they do. Um, I don't think, I mean, I'm being very honest, I don't think West Indies have it, even with our best team, to challenge the likes of uh, India and uh, Australia and, and those teams in, in 50 over tournaments. We may be able to get up to quarter final stage, but win, two and a half out of ten, to win it, to come away with the trophy. I'm not being negative, I'm just being no, realistic. No, yeah, honest, yeah. yeah, I don't think that we have, um, you see, a, a team don't just come together, you know that. If you put a team here to work with you, they don't just fall in place and everybody... Yeah, it has to have a, a, a period of time. Yeah, we have yeah. to be working as a team. I mm. must understand your role, you must understand my role, and we must understand player B, C, D, E. Mm. So we, it must be that. It must be the communication that comes from the management down to the team. It must be um, the, the, the physiotherapist. It must be... It takes a lot to, pro, to, to get a winning team, you know. In, where, where the focus is on a lot, in, in football, like because we see a lot of football. Mm -hmm. You see what happens when managers come and manage, and even backroom staff change. Yeah. The way things happen change, right? Um, in cricket, it's the same thing. We're not under the microscope, so to speak, for people to see those things. But we need to have, uh, if it's a unit, it's a unit. It's a team, it's a team. They need to be out there as a team. It, there are some things that will be communicated without a word being said, you know? Um, and I don't think we're anywhere near that as a professional sports team. You look at professional sports worldwide, which cricket has now become, and you look at a top team in any sport, and the, what is needed for them to win is a longer period, planning, the preparation as a team, the, the, all the things that you go through as a team. Everybody in the team will not like one another, but we know the idiosyncrasies about different people. So to put this team together in a hodgepodge patchwork manner, even if you bring all our players, not going to happen. Everybody else is playing as a team. What about Stuart Law as the, cap, as the coach? Do you think he's the right man for the job? Um, if the West Indies board cricket committee says so, I would have to say so. I mm -hmm. don't know his background. I know he played a little bit for Australia. Mm -hmm. um, in my time, the best coach we had was Otis Gibson. I say that uh, unequivocally. Uh, I think Otis was given a, a rough treatment. But um, when you see, he, the day he left, he turned up and got a job with, with, with um, England cricket. Yeah. And then he... He's with, with South Africa, he's with right South now, Africa and now. I mean, they're doing, what, you know... Reasonably well, yeah. yeah. Um, so, I can't say about law. Um, I wish him all the best. But any coach will be completely hamstrung by not having your best players. They don't know who going and play in the next tournament, if John will play, if, you know. It's not a nice environment to be in. It's not a very professional setup, and you're always haggling over players. And I suppose he would deal with it when players come in at different levels of fitness and different levels, playing at different backgrounds and whatever. So it's not an easy job for a man to, to, say, to take that and put bandage over it and plaster it up and say, well, we have a nice finished product. And the first day the pressure turned on. Everything implodes. So we can't judge Stuart Law. We have to judge the whole cricket in the Caribbean. Cricket in the Caribbean, you open so we could close by it, is, is in crisis. You had said, and I said, it's in troubled waters. And we need, rather than this hodgepodge stacker to approach people sniping from all sides, we need to come together. The territorial boards who own West Indies cricket have stronger representation at CWI level. Um, try and, 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 and get a united way forward and have, they are supposed to be making policy, not, not really dealing with the cricket. Put a strong cricket team together in terms of planning the way for West Indies cricket. There's still hope for West Indies cricket. 
But in the present environment and in the present setup, um, it's not going to help us. We could throw how much money we want at it, it's not going to help in the short term. And we don't have much money right now to throw anyway. We don't have. But we're seeing this cricket world as a different animal, you know. They turn over something like $37 million somewhere around there every year. So I suppose you could find ways of cutting costs at West Indies level to, to put a development program in place. We are crying out for a development program. I don't know how much club cricket is played in the islands, you know, right? So while we may be seeing West Indies at the top and saying that, okay, the West Indies team, one may even want to start a question, how long West Indies cricket could survive in its present construct, which is a whole different program and a whole different discussion by itself. Because if Papua New Guinea and Hong Kong Yes. Could be ranked 15th and 16th or thereabouts in the world. I sure Trinidad could be them. Yes. Our Trinidad team could be them. Yes. Right? Now, for us to qualify, we have to take seven years to come through the different ranks. Should we not then start thinking about going that route? You know, that, 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 that's another issue to be discussed because a lot of people are saying why, why Trinidad best don't go it on, on, on their own. Mm. Because, I mean, if we bring back all of our players, I mean, you know. But then again, you, you could bring back your players, but you, don't, you, you might not always win. Right? Mm -hmm. But we have a strong um, bunch of guys here that if we come together, I mean, we could um, be un unbeatable. And we saw it in the past. The yeah, Champions League. Yeah, we saw it in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So, so even world cricket is too cloistered, in my view. ICC should open up it like how football opened up when FIFA opened up mm -hmm. to, to what it was. And it's, cricket should go in an expansionary mode from, from Trinidad in the Caribbean in worldwide rather than a contracting mode of power. Mr. Babi, we have run out of time. You know, they say when you're having fun, time pass so quickly. I want to thank you for, you know, coming on, on, on set and talking cricket and explaining to the, to the, to the viewers um, the state of cricket in the Caribbean um, and especially the, with the West Indies. I want to thank you very much. And um, I want to wish you and your club all success in the season this year. And um, I hope that you will be available next time I call on for you. Yeah, th thank thanks you for having me, George, yeah. and all the best. Yeah. Well, we have come to the end of an edition of Scoreboard here on ACTM. We were talking cricket with former WIBC director and executive member of Trent Omega Cricket Board, Mr. Balak Mahabe. As I said in the beginning, if you miss any part of this program, remember tomorrow at 1 o'clock, there's a repeat. And you can join us next week at 8 p.m. Remember, Scoreboard is on every Tuesday evening at 8 p.m. So have a blessed week ahead, and I'll see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.